supposed to be getting me a period any hour now. I get a question about my relationship status whenever I have a Q&A box. Genuinely, best thing I've ever spent my money on. I like to use a pillow as my little my little comfy desk. But one of these days, I'm gonna, I've, I've spilled, but one of these days, more catastrophic things are gonna happen. I just feel it, I'm asking for it. This right here is the current read. So far, so good, but I'm only on chapter 14, not even halfway. I was having a really lazy Saturday where I was just reading on the couch, but I kind of got hit with an inspiration to make some Christmas cookies. So I'm making two of my classics that I make every year, sugar cookies and gingerbread cookies. Both those do have to sit for like two hours, so I'm getting started um, now so that I can start the actual baking process a little bit later. I've got my apron on and I've got some really old tunes on in the background. I'm listening to Can't Take My Eyes Off of You and like tons of songs from that era. So the apartment is just filled with like this nostalgic vibe. I wish I could play them for you, but copyright strikes are not my friend. Laptop is over there with the recipes. So I'll have them linked in the description box below. My regular um, recipe book that I take these recipes from that's back at my parents. But I will probably make that recipe when I am back home for the holidays. But for now, this should do. Dinner time, so I am making pasta with a little vodka tomato sauce, which I talked about is a new recent love of mine to make. It's really simple. I just eyeball everything, so hard to give like exact recipe ingredients, but I'm just getting some onions going right now. I've got Harry Potter in the background because in October I had it in my head that I wanted to watch all the Harry Potter films from start to finish. And for some reason, the last few I just, I didn't get to. So, um, got the first part one, Deathly Hollows part one on. I've had the strainer since first year of university. If you're gonna make pasta and strain it, this is the kind of strainer that you want. Something aesthetically pleasing that makes you feel like, ooh, happy about the carbs that you're about to consume. I'm adding chili flakes to this. The stage we're currently on, I'm gonna add some tomato paste. Some vodka. I'm gonna add the cream. Wilton white decorating icing and some sprinkles for the sugar cookies. I know when I was younger I used to make them with my mom but for so many years now I've been kind of like in charge of holiday baking and it's just something I really enjoy. I don't know baking is very therapeutic once you get into it and you just like let it happen there's like a flow to it. I did have both recipes that I made today but I think I'm gonna definitely have to freeze these. Makes me sad, because usually I make these and kind of give them to people, but don't really think that's the vibe for this year. I think people, especially with the second lockdown in Toronto, are wondering like how I'm, uh, how I'm doing <laughs> uh, with all this, like a lot more alone time. And you know, I'll say it's not great, but not ideal in any way, but um, I'm trying to just, you know, make the most of it. For the holidays, I do plan on going home back to my hometown and my dad's gonna pick me up and it's gonna be two weeks with just my parents and my brother and I'm really looking forward to that. But during this like time kind of in between that, 
I've just been, you know, looking at it as an opportunity to slow down a bit, I think. I am someone who's very go, go, go. And this has forced me to kind of hit the brakes a little bit. You know, it'd be easy not to even do something like baking because like I do live alone. So why do I need all these baked goods? I don't, <laughs> but this is an activity that I really enjoy and helps get me mentally in the holiday spirit. So I thought it was important to, to do. I should preface this by saying that I'm supposed to be getting my period any hour now, but I am bawling, bawling over the Deadly Hollows part two. I still have 40 minutes to go. I need to get it together. <laughs> I was just making cookies, you know, <laughs> and now I'm bawling. I'm gonna keep watching now. <laughs> I did get my period this morning, so that explains a lot about last night. <laughs> and immediately I ordered McDonald's. I got an Egg McMuffin and a very large coffee because it's a, it's a need, not a want kind of situation. And I'm also catching up on Jenny slash Where I Live's vlogs. She's currently moving. People ask me like what kind of YouTubers or who I like to watch online and she's one of them. I just really like her, her vibe and her energy and she's based in New York, so even though um, I'm based in Toronto, I always feel like uh, city creators, like I, I gel well with in terms of like their content because it just feels very familiar. Also, I don't know what it is about watching a moving vlog, but I always feel inspired to move, even though moving sucks. And I'm so thankful that I haven't had to move in so long, but, and I, whoa, that was so aggressive. My phone, my iPad and my laptop just went off at the same time. But yeah, I love my apartment. I have no desire to move, but like everyone makes it seem so fun when you're seeing a new vlog and the potential or a moving vlog and you see the potential of a new space, but it's stressful. I know logically it's not fun. I would not be happy if I had to move right now, but it's fun to live vicariously through someone else. And this does make me very aware of the fact that one day when I do move out of this apartment, like I will be documenting the whole experience because this is just like too good, too good of content. Just put that in this vlog for fun, or I'm gonna meet him at a park and just take a little bit of a break and leave the apartment. So overall, it wasn't like a bad move at all. Um, but I have a few little th I just had my groceries delivered, so I thought I would do a quick grocery haul. I mean, it's not a Trader Joe's haul level of excitement, but. I don't know, maybe there's something interesting in here. Cheese, a pizza dough. I think pizza dough is a great thing to buy. It's cheap and then you can also, I bought two, so I'm gonna freeze them and then that's a really easy meal to have at some point that covers me for two, three nights. Cucumber, tomato paste, zucchini. Also got some sweet potatoes, parchment paper for all the baking. Portellini pasta, this little two thing is $5. Olives for the pizza making. I like olives on my pizza. Pizza sauce, also for the pizza making. What are these called? Be breakfast sausage patties on sale. Sausage. I've gotten the maple one before. I've never got the spicy one. So hopefully that's good. Stone mill naturally fermented sprouted rye 12 grain bread. Whole wheat bagels. I freeze my grains because I don't go through this amount in one week. But if I have it in the freezer, then that means whenever I do want a bagel or I do want some toast, I always have it. And I'm, I'm out of both of them. So I got that. Penne pasta. Tons of yogurt, it was on special for three for 10, so I stocked up because I have usually one Greek yogurt a day. Silk soy and silk almond vanilla coffee creamers. I go through one of these usually a week. And a thing of eggs. This isn't like a complete grocery trip in the sense that I still have things in my fridge and freezer that I need to use up and in my pantry. So when I grocery shop, I really try and find, A, I pay attention to what's on sale so that I can buy in bulk what is on sale. And I also too like to look at what I do have and see what what ingredients I need to acquire to help use that stuff. So yeah, that's just my little money saving tip and that really works out. I also freeze so much, so many things. I find freezing like the best thing that I ever started doing. 
this vacuum, genuinely, best thing I've ever spent my money on. It's a well-known fact that I don't like vacuuming, and this is cordless, so I just get to zip around my apartment really quickly. I don't have to worry about moving my cords uh, every time I shift to a different room. Big source of happiness right here. All morning I was on a FaceTime with my friend Nadine and we had like a work session together. It was very productive. I finished up a video that is actually going up in the next 30 minutes. So if you haven't already seen my updated winter night routine, go check it out. I'll have a card right here or it'll be linked in the description box. I'm currently now working on a winter wardrobes essential blog post, five winter wardrobe essentials. So if you want to check that out, that will also be linked in the description box. snowed last night so I'm looking outside my window and the city is just looking beautiful. I had a morning reading session on my Kindle. I actually was reading a bonus um, little package that Cassandra Clare had sent out to her mailing list. If you've read her Shadowhunter series and you know the character is Jason Clary so this little bonus was filled of different scenes um, with them so that was really sweet. It was like a little walk down memory lane. But in my nighttime routine I talked about the 12 dates of Christmas starting that by Jenny Bayless. I actually finished it last night and just wanted to report that I thought this one was really cute. A bit predictable but it's set in a small town and she goes on lots of funny dates, as you can tell by the title, The 12 Dates of Christmas. So definitely recommend giving it a go if you want something uh, something festive to get you in the holiday spirit. Um, this one and In a Holidays were two really nice ones that I read this year. So I might read, you know, one or two others, but uh, I'm so, so happy, so good. Now I really need to figure out what my next book is. Um, which that will be a tonight kind of problem. The morning problem is the fact that I need to go get ready because uh, I have a video to film today. A video that you're seeing after Christmas. Well, I just filmed the video that I need to film and this is the first time in all year probably that I pulled out my ring light. There it is, right there. Also, this is chaotic, must fix. Oh my, I just burned out my light bulb. Are you kidding? At least I was able to film the video. Oh no. Wait, did you see that? That's concerning. Didn't use that light for a year and burned out on me. That's so rude. We are going to ignore the fact that there are clothes on my office chair that I've still not dealt with. I asked you guys on Instagram to ask me some questions. So I'm gonna answer a few here in this vlog because I never answer questions on YouTube. So um, this is gonna be fun. Also, I do do Q and A's pretty regularly on Instagram. So if you wanna get all the tea, you should be following me on there. What is one thing you were proud of from this year? Absolutely starting CaitlinDeSilva.com and the newsletter. Those were two really big projects and I was able to launch them and still keep up with the YouTube videos and I'm really proud of how they were executed too. I think they're both really great jump offs for uh, 2021 projects. Any men in your life question mark? Are you content looking? I get a question about my relationship status whenever I have a Q&A box um, But no, there are no men in my life. I am single. I'm really happy with this life that I've built for myself and you know if someone comes around that I feel like is worth bringing into the fold then um, I'm very open to that, but I am NOT in any rush to lock myself into something, if that makes sense. I really need to do a whole video on embracing single life because I think far too many people view it in a negative way. What is something that people don't know about you and if they knew, they'd be surprised? I don't know if this is particularly juicy, but I definitely do swear more in my everyday language with friends and family than I do, than the, I guess you would think based on me online. It's just when a camera's on, I don't, my my brain doesn't go there. But, you know, I am known to drop an F-bomb here and there. 
I am comfortable with it. <laughs> your newsletters look great. Do you have any tips or could you show us your creation process? The whole reason my newsletters look the way they do is because I use an email marketing service called Flowdesk. I'll have a link below. It is my affiliate code link in full disclosure. If you sign up for it, I do get some commission, but it gives you, I think, 50% off the monthly membership. They're currently in beta, so they definitely have sometimes little kinks here and there, but visually, I think it's the most beautiful service for making gorgeous emails and it is really simple to use too so so far really happy with it and i'm really happy that you guys are, are liking the newsletters too i think visually because they look so aesthetically pleasing they make it more enjoyable too to read um and yeah I'm, I, I love them how have you been coping with living alone during isolation i am constantly on the phone with friends and family, whether it's like phone calls or FaceTimes, they save me. I keep myself busy with work. I get outside. I, you know, I don't spend all day just in front of my TV. I try and give myself a rule of if I veg out one day, the next day I have to do something um, just so that I don't get into that like blase headspace because I know that that's not that's not good for me. I, I don't do well in that in that kind of mode, but you know, it is it is tough not ideal But just making the most of it. How do you always have your shit together? It's so impressive Please do not think I have my shit together all the time. There's an open drawer that's been open for days There's an alarming amount of Christmas decor boxes in my closet the underwear order that I showed off in last week's vlog I still haven't washed those I am not perfect so yeah, don't don't think that my everything in my life is is always uh, is always figured out. I am just trying to do my best, like everyone else. Okay, I think that's good.